Hello problem solvers, Colfax Math here. Today I'm going to do a video on absolute value. And I got three different skills under absolute value. The first skill is how to graph absolute values. Then I got the second skill, how to solve equations with absolute values. And the third is inequalities with absolute values on the number line. All an absolute value is, is these straight bars right here. And it says everything inside of those bars becomes positive. So if I have absolute value of negative 5, that's just equal to 5. If I have absolute value of 6, that just stays a 6. You don't do anything. So what it means is everything inside that bar could either be positive or negative. But after you take the absolute value of it, it becomes positive. All right, let's get started with these problems here. I recommend you pause the video and try the problem before I do it. And then I'll pause the video and watch how I do it. So number one, I have y is equal to absolute value of x plus 3. And it says to graph. Whenever you don't know how to graph something, you always set up a t-bar. x and y. And you pick values for x, plug them in, and find the values for y. A good place to always start is a 0. So if I pick 0 for x, 0 goes in there. Absolute value of it's still 0. 0 plus 3. That means y is equal to 3. Pick a 1, absolute value of it, 1 plus 3 is 4. Let's try some negative values. Negative 1, absolute value of that negative 1 becomes positive. So then I have 1 plus 3 is 4. And I can see a pattern here. Negative 2, negative 2, absolute value becomes positive 2. 2 plus 3 is 5. Or if I had 2, 2 plus 3 is 5. So I could see these values are repeating themselves. I'm going to graph these points. I'm over 0, up 3. I'm over 1, up 4. Over 2, up 5. In the negative x department, I go over negative 1, up 4. Negative 2, up 5. And I can see the graph of this absolute value is a V-shaped opening up. Pause the video and try number two, and then unpause and watch how I do it. Same way, I'm going to set up x and y, pick values of x. I'm going to try something like a zero. Zero plus three is three. Pick a one. One plus three is four. Absolute value having no effect on it. Two is five. Well, let's try some negatives now. Negative one plus three is two. Absolute value is two. Negative two plus three is 1. Negative 3 plus 3 is 0. And then that's where the absolute values are going to come into play. Negative 4. Negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1. Absolute value of that is 1. So I could see it's actually starting to repeat itself here around these values. So at negative 3, I'm up 0. At negative 4, I'm up 1. At negative 2, I'm up 1. At negative 1, I'm up 2. So I can see where we're going here. At 0, I'm up 1, 2, 3. So that's outside of it. Let me pick one more value. Negative 5 plus 3 is negative 2. Absolute value of that negative 2 is positive 2. So at negative 5, I'm up 2. And I can see that's where that side of the graph is going. All right, let's move down to solving equations. So what I'm saying here is everything in here could either be positive or it could all be negative. So there's actually two equations here. Negative 3r could be equal to 21, or negative 3r could be equal to negative 21, right? Because if negative 3r is equal to negative 21, I'd take the absolute value of it and it would become positive. Now I just solve these equations. Divide both sides by negative 3. r is by itself. 21 divided by negative 3 is negative 7. There's the solution. Same thing over here. Divide by negative 3, giving me r by itself. Negative divided by negative is positive. So I have two solutions, either 7 or negative 7. All right. Let's move on to number four here. Negative 8m, pause the video, do this problem before I do it, equals 72. Or 
the second equation is whatever's in there, negative 8m can equal negative 72. Solving the equation, divide both sides by a negative 8. m is by itself. Positive divided by a negative is going to be a negative. 72 divided by negative 8 is negative 9, one solution. Same thing here, I'm going to divide by negative 8. Difference is negative divided by a negative is now positive. So here, m can equal 9. So I have two solutions, negative 9 or 9. Sometimes they're written in a solution set like this, negative 9 or 9, or oxum like that. Now our third skill with absolute value is graphing. And there's a lot of little pieces here. These are a little trickier. But what I'm saying is this right here, x plus 2, could be less than 2. Or everything in there could be negative. So I'm going to set up a negative. But for it to be a negative, that means i got to reverse that sign because I'm really dividing by a negative. So here I'm going to have x plus 2 is now greater than negative 2. I solve an inequality the same way as I solve an equation, with the one exception, if I multiply or divide by a negative, I flip that sign. And that's why that thing got flipped. Subtract 2 from both sides, and I'm going to have x by itself is less than 2 minus 2, 0. Or, subtract 2 from both sides, x by itself is greater than 2 minus 2, negative 4. So I'm over here at a negative 4. It is greater than that, so it's got to go this way. x is less than 0, so it's got to go this way. So it's everything between negative 4 and 0. These open circles say it is not including negative 4 and 0. If this inequality was less than or equal to, I would color these in. Because it is only less than, I leave them open. Pause the video and try this one, and then uh, I'll do it. P minus 9 can be greater than 16, one possible solution. Or P minus 9, I'm going to reverse that symbol, can be less than negative 16, because I'm dividing by a negative to get that negative 16. I'll add 9 to both sides. P by itself, P is greater than 25. There's 25. Again, open circle. It's everything on that side of it. I'll add 9 to both sides here. P is by itself less than negative 16, and 9 is negative 7. So P is less than negative 7. Negative 7 would be right here. Again, an open circle. It's everything less than, so it's that away. And then this one, P is greater than 25, is that away. So that's what it looks like graphically, and that's what it looks like algebraically. All right, quick overview on absolute value. I sure hope that helped. Um, if you have any questions, please post them in the comments. If you're new to the channel, think about subscribing.